Hello, Exploring Consciousness podcast listeners. Today we have a good friend of mine, Tom Campbell, and today we're going to be talking about Tom's Park. Welcome to the show, Tom. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me, Donna. This should be fun. Tom's Park's one of my favorite subjects right now. It's actually one of my favorites. And so we have to let people know, even though I told them on Monday what it's about, we'd like to know, why did you start Tom's Park? Who's it for? Well, the idea for Tom's Park was really born out of a course that I gave and that I do give. That's now actually a course that's online that teaches people how to get into their being level, how to get into their intuitive side and experience all of the paranormal things there is to experience, you know, healing, uh, remote viewing, uh, telepathic communication, those sort of sorts of things, out of body, you know, all of that belongs to the intuitive side of our consciousness processing. And a lot of people would like to experience those things, but they just find it really, really difficult. And I've had some people that will be in my courses again and again and again, and they struggle and they struggle and they struggle. And it's just difficult for some to get it. And the, the fundamental reason that makes it difficult for them is by habit and their experience, they cannot let go of that intellect. That intellect is always right up there trying to run things, trying to make the choices, trying to figure out the solutions, trying to see how the process is going. And it's, it's because we live our, our daily life in, you know, in physical reality with our intellect doing that for us, and it's a necessary thing for it to be doing for us. Well, we get so habituated to that that it gets very difficult to set that intellect aside and get into our intuitive side. So because there, I, there were so many people struggling with this, I thought that there, there needs to be an easier way to teach these people, an easier way that they can find success without having to, oh, I don't know, break that barrier of getting their intellect to sit, you know, to sit down and be quiet while they go over on the intuitive side. Because as soon as their intellect intrudes to them trying to get onto the intuitive side, the intuitive side crumbles and goes away because the intuitive side doesn't work with the intellect. And when the intellect takes over, then the intuitive side disappears and vice versa. When the intuitive side takes over, the intellect has to disappear. But most people's intellects don't like disappearing. They just want to always be in the driver's seat and in charge. So anyway, I came up with Tom's Park, which if you start working in Tom's Park, you don't need any background. You don't need to be a meditator. You don't need to you know, have binaural beats, you know, the helping you meditate. You don't need anything other than an imagination. You do need an imagination. Now, some people have a hard time having an imagination even. That's a challenge for some people. But if you work at it, if you work at it, if you have even a, just a little bit of imagination, we'll do that and it'll grow. It'll be easier and easier. It's a natural part of your consciousness. So you may have to work at it a bit iteratively, but eventually you not only will have an imagination, but you will have so much experience with this imagination that it'll be easier and easier for you to let go of playing all the parts in your imagination and letting that imagination just run wild wherever it wants to go. You know, let the story kind of unfold as it happens. Well, when you get to that point where you're letting this daydream just unfold as it happens, well, now you're in a place where you've let your intellect go because now you're letting it unfold. And this daydream then turns into an out-of-body. We could call it that. It turns into an out-of-body where you're getting a data stream from the larger consciousness system and you're no longer in Kansas, Dorothy. You, know, you now are someplace else. You're not here. 
And from there, you can do any number of things. So I set up this Tom's Park to let people get to their intuitive side through their imagination. And the imagination is really a very powerful thing. And if you don't have an imagination, well, you're missing something because your imagination helps you solve problems, helps you see what's what's likely to happen in the future. You know, all those things, all those intuitive things come to you uh, in a way that's very similar to your imagination, you see? So that's why I created Tom's Park. It's for those people who struggle with going out of body, with being able to heal with their mind, being able to remote view, uh, being able to connect with dead Uncle Fred, who was their favorite person, you know? These people needed a little help. So this Tom's Park is a tool. Now, it's not a tool that will get you there instantly, but it's a tool that if you work with it and work with it and you continue to do it, eventually it will get you there. As long as you don't have that intellect following along and saying, well, I wonder, is this, is this where the LCS connects to the data stream? Let me check, you know, and if that intellect comes along, well, just go back and do it again and do it again. And eventually it will become so commonplace to you that you will let it just run on on its own. You know, it just happens naturally. So this is a technique where you just are natural. It works if you can just, you know, let a natural thing happen, which is have a daydream. Let your mind just run off into a daydream. It's a very common, not that hard thing for most people to learn how to do if you don't do it already. Most of us do. I mean, most everybody has, has daydreams from time to time. And mostly those daydreams go to a point where they do run on their own. You're not doing both sides of the conversation. So it's a, it's a very simple way for people to get to experience the paranormal, that larger reality of consciousness uh, without doing the usual meditation, point consciousness, uh, you know, all the techniques that are used to, to, get, to get you there. So that's really what it's, why I created it and what it's for. But as it turns out, it works just as well for everybody. If you happen to be an old hand and you've been doing this for 20 years, you know, you still can get a lot out of the Tom's Park because it just gives you a kind of a fun entrance to this park, which is a just a, a place that's all full of interesting things to do that will eventually lead you into, um, you know, paranormal experiences. Let's talk a little bit about how about the media that we use and then. I want to wait till we get into the specifics of the park to say what can you do there and why it's beneficial. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hold on to that one. So yeah. how I started was with the book form. It was a Kindle book. And so what I liked about it is I got to um, be able to go back and reread what the environment is about before I went in first. And you have a lot of instructions for people about how to behave in the park, how to let go in the park. Let's talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that. And it's an audio book and, and a book form if you, for those that need yeah. uh, either one. But let's talk a little bit about mm -hmm. the instructions and, and a little bit okay. about it. Yeah. Well, you know, the book itself is a very small book. Yeah. It's, it's only about 60 pages or something like that. It's just a very little book. And yes, it does come in, in an e-book. It comes in a paper book which is paperback or in a hardback book and it comes as an audio book the audio book is on soundwise podcast listeners go to the companion website look for tom's park under the info about our guests and it'll have all way to it'll have the four ways that you can get into the book okay so about the about the rules and and so on you know tom's park is something you do on your own you're really writing your own story you know you're the center you are the character that's creating the story and then eventually uh, the lcs helps create that story with you so it's that sort of a thing again daydream until the dream is no longer yours it's just the lcs sending you a, a data stream what i was meaning it was um to bring yourself into, bring it for fun, there's no fear, that kind of instruction. Yes, I, I yes. All I had to do in my book 
is to really set up the park to yeah. give people an idea of what was in it and how you behave there. You know, what's what's the nature of it? Well, obviously, if I want people to be able to use this as a way to get into the paranormal, I have to make people feel safe because one of the things that gets in people's way is fear. So I have to make it a very safe space. And in order to do that, I have to make it so you can never get lost. I have to make it so there's no critter or animal that would ever hurt you. I have to make it so that if you swim in the lake, you can't drown. I have to think of all the ways that people would find an unfamiliar place frightening. And I purposely then set up the rules of how this park works such that all of those scary things are just impossible. Matter of fact, the park is such a positive place and the people in it are such a positive place that you know for sure that if you run into something there that's not positive, it's something that you brought into the park. That lack of positivity is something you carried there. It's a negative thing that you have in your mind that you're creating the park because there is no thing in Tom's Park that isn't positive. Now, Tom's Park not only has things in it like parks do, but it has people in it. There's a, a very large staff that is there just to see that your needs are met, that the things you'd want to learn are available to you, to help you, to uh, answer your questions. So it's full of staff that will interact with you. And not only are they there to help you uh, get around in the park, but you know, if you uh, would like a dinner partner, well, they're a dinner partner. If you'd need a dance partner, you know, they hold dances every Saturday night. You have, there have dances, you know, out at the recreation center. So there, these people that are in the park are people that you can befriend, people that you can get to know. And every time you come to the park, you will find that they're there. And even though the park is a busy place, they will always be available to you when you're there and when you need them. There'll never be an instance in Tom's Park where they'll say, well, Susie's busy right now. Could you just sit down and wait a while? She has a client, you know, or, oh, Susie doesn't work here anymore. You know, she left. You'll never find that. The Susie will always be available for you when you need to talk to her. And same with George, you know, they, they'll always be there. So this park is a very positive place. That was really important for me going in that there was that much safety. And it's mm -hmm. even down, you guys listening, it's even down, Tom's even thought about allergies. So there's nothing, there's no allergies that can hurt you. There's, there's mm -hmm. nothing there. He's really thought it all out. Yeah. And how no. you get there. So you start off with you can have the book and they have a map and i started with the map and you can even change the map later but it's a jumping off area and mm -hmm. so he lays it out for you what the park looks like there's an entrance there's a lake there's a recreation center there's mm -hmm. a um big uh what's that what's the one called the big the lodge the lodge so there's a lodge so we're going to start talking about all the things you can do there and why you might want to do that so let's start at the entrance I go to the entrance and then immediately to the left, there's Tom's Grill. I go there first. <laughs> I, I get a cinnamon milkshake, Tom, every time I go to Tom's yeah. Grill. Well, you know, in Tom's Park, I encourage everyone to use all of their senses. Oh, yeah. Tom's Park is a place where you not only see and hear things like you might in a meditation, but you smell and taste and feel just as well. So it's all, it's full of all sorts of things that you can taste and feel and see and hear and, you know, interact with, with all of your senses. So we start with Tom's Grill. I mean, Uncle Tom's Grill, Tom. you know, and you can get some of the best ice cream you've ever had there. I mean, they serve up meals of all sorts, but it's right on the beach. You can rent bicycles there if you'd like to bicycle around the lake or on other paths and it's just a good place to start so mostly the entrance starts right there at uncle tom's grill now also 
like I say, there's a beach there. And because I knew that people would have a problem with the beach and swimming because they didn't come in their bathing suits and that, that would be an issue. So I put change kiosk there. You just walk into it with your street clothes and you walk out the other side in swimwear and uh, you have a big beach towel with you. And of course, when you come back, it works the same way. So even though you've been swimming and snorkeling and doing that sort of thing all day long, you walk back through that kiosk and you come out the other side with not only all your street clothes on, but your makeup is perfect. Your hair is perfect. It's dry. Everything is just the way it was when you walked in, except you just feel more refreshed. You see, and I have one of those kiosks at the recreation center. So you don't need to take a shower after exercising or whatever. You just walk through the kiosk, get all your equipment when you go through the kiosk. When you walk back through, it all just disappears and you come out the other side just like you started you know, when you walk in. So see, that takes all the, the effort, the, the, the busy work, like the, the preparations and things that you have to do. All of that disappears. You don't have that. I even have a kiosk where you can get younger. Or if you're a very young person, you could get older. And that's there so that if you're older, and you think, well, okay, I really don't want to do the hiking up the trails because, you know, that's not really a sport for older people. So you just walk through that kiosk and now, you know, you're, you're a young person again. Now go play that game of volleyball, you know, go run that track, do whatever you want to do because your body is now young, hike that trail. And uh, it, so I, I make everything available to everybody all the time with no fear. But there is one other thing that I should mention when we were talking about the rules that I wanted to say that I didn't. And that is that I also talk about the people there. Those people need to be treated just like any other acquaintances or people that you might run into. These are not, oh, they're just what we say, virtual people, they're not really real people. So, you know, it doesn't matter. You can order them around or be rude or take advantage of them or that kind of thing, thing. But no, you cannot. That's negative. And there's no negativity in Times Park. You treat those people just like they were your own family, just like they were any other person in a establishment that you go into that are there to help you. You know, so it's very important that you don't see any of Times Park as oh just my imagination right. so you know i can i can uh, not be a nice person there and it really won't matter you know, it does matter all the choices you make anywhere in any reality will modify your evolution whether you de-evolve or evolve the quality of your consciousness depends on your choices and that's true with all the choices that you make whether it's in your imagination or whether it's in an out-of-body reality or whether it's here in this reality. Yeah, so, because it is all about love and evolution, and, and yeah. it is all about feedback and how you treat people. Everybody, everybody matters, and everything is important. So that's another set of the rules, you know, that you have to uh, always be positive, always be nice. There's lots of little critters there that you can talk to. The horses talk, you know, the squirrels talk, the chipmunks talk. Yeah, you can you can have conversations with uh, with every, everything that's there. Some of them are very wise and knowledgeable, and others are not. And others just like to pull your chain. Sometimes, you know, they are uh, just all assortment, but they're all positive. Yes, I like how you talk about the park, in that to start off with something fun. So don't get serious right away when you're practicing. It's really important to go into Tom's Park about an hour a day or so and to start out with something fun. And that's why he immediately, the entrance to the left is about the beach and fun and splashing around and going to the recreation center. What are all the things you can do in the recreation center? And how do you, how do you think about starting off with it being fun? Oh, well, <laughs> it, it's important to start off and just be fun. You know, it, if you go into it with the idea, oh, I'm going to go into it and connect to the LCS and fly off into an out of body. Well, now you have all these preconceived notions and you're just going to get in your own way. It's going to, you're going to stumble if you do that. That's not the right approach. You should approach to just have fun. 
just enjoy yourself in the park and try to develop your ability to interact with all your senses. So when you go into, let's say, swimming, you have to feel that water, feel the coolness, feel the wetness, the splash. You know, hear the splash, feel it, feel the little droplets come up that you splash and it lands in your face, you know. Uh, you know that when you get in that water, it'll, it'll be cold when you first get in, but then it'll start to feel really nice. So it's engaging all of your senses is the important thing. So you can... You know, there's boating there and there's jet skis for the for the you know the motorcycle crowd that uh, um, you know would like to zip around as fast as possible and there's a, a jet ski course that's laid out that uh, you try to you know see how fast you can get around that course uh, there's there's boats you can get into and they will move just with your intent you can you know direct them how you want them to move and there's others that you have to paddle so it, uh, you know, there's lots of things to do. You go to the rec center, and it's called the Warner Recreation Center, named after Keith Warner and Donna Warner. And there's almost everything you could imagine in there. I mean, there's bowling alleys and roller rinks and, you know, room, weight rooms and Aerobic, aerobic places and basketball courts, courts and, and racquetball. Yeah, all of that. Everything. It's all in there and all the equipment's there that you need. And like I say, everything you need, you'll get when you walk through the kiosk. The downstairs part of that is like a big arcade. Yeah. There's all sorts of games that are there to play. And I think the bowling alley's down in the, da in the, uh, in the basement part of that too. All the really noisy, <laughs> all the noisy high action stuff, you know, is... Oh, tends to go down to the basement so that noise doesn't bother other people on the on the floors. You go, there's even a rifle range there. And if you can think of it, it's it's there. Every sport, every, you know, it's an archery range there. Every sport that, that you can imagine, and probably even some that you can't, you know, are there in that recreation center. And outside the recreation center, there's fields if you want to play sports that take up a you know that, that you have to go outside and play a field like football or soccer or and those are the same things depending on where you yeah, come from exactly. but uh tennis yeah, yeah tennis all those things that are outdoorsy you have those kinds of of courts there so it it gives you any sort of recreation that you like and if let's say you want to go play some basketball but you just don't want to play basketball by yourself Right. Well, you can just ask those who work there. You say, hey, I need, I need some players. Well, some of those players may be other people in Tom's Park, and some of those players may be your staff. So the staff will come. That's part of their job, to make sure that you get what you need for the experiences that you have. So you want to play basketball and you need, uh, you know, 12 other people, you know, to do that, then there they are. They'll just come trotting on out. Just give them a minute or two to arrive from the uh, information center. You know, they hang out there. You know, there's a nice little little cafe there or whatever, and the staff tend to hang out there. So they'll, they'll jog on down to the rec center, and they'll be your team and the opposing team if you, if you want to play. So whatever you want, you know, it's, it's there. You can ice skate. Uh, there's pool tables there. Uh, you go up to the to the upper levels, and they have virtual reality games. You can go up there and select almost any virtual reality game that you've ever played, and there it is. You can go up there, and the rooms are fantastic because they're large rooms, you know, padded walls, like four four cameras up there to check the motion and to see what's related to what, and it's uh, you know the the video. It's like the whole wall, you know, is like video. So this is this is virtual reality, the kind of virtual reality place that you would like if you were a billionaire, you know, the one that you would put together if you were a billionaire. Yeah. That's the kind of thing they have there. So that's really well, well outfitted for the virtual reality. And there's a cafe there, so you can always break to get a to get a snack or a sandwich shop or that sort of thing. And there's a big lounge just for hanging out and meeting other people who are also having a sport there and maybe taking a break or just coming or just going. And there's a big lounge there for staff. And you only get to go into the staff lounge if you're invited. 
And if the person that invited you leaves, then you have to too, and be, have to invite to somebody else. But there's also uh, another lounge there that is staff and uh, people who are who are in the park, experiencing the park, and that's the place for them to mix. And that's where the dances are held on the, on the weekend nights. The dances are held there. Some of the staff members uh, are also musically inclined, and they get their instruments and they go down and everybody has a really good time there on Saturday nights. If you want to socialize with that sort of thing. So that's the recreation center. It has just about everything you can imagine. And right up against the recreation center is a wildlife refuge. Oh, I was going to ask call, about that. Yeah. It's a small, just, a small animal. Close. Yeah. It's a small animal wildlife refuge. It's not, you're not going to find bears and elk and, you know, you're not going to find the big guys in there. But they're all the small animals of all sorts, and most of them are very friendly because that's kind of a lot of people. It's just off the lake, and there's a lot of people around those areas. So if you just want to sit down and have a chat with a rabbit or a squirrel or a porcupine or almost any kind of critter, um, there you go. That's the small animal refuge, and it's a good place to uh, to hang out. So. That's kind of the, the recreation center. Now around the recreation center is the lake to the, to the one side and the, a, a lot of hiking trails to the other side, meadows and places that you can just walk and ride your horse, uh, kind of just, there's no fences in this park. And the park is as big as you can imagine. In other words, you could ride your horse all day, all day the next day, and all day the next day. And you can't go so far as to go out of Tom's Park. You're always in Tom's Park. And Tom's Park is, is uh, you know, larger than what you can experience. So you'll never go outside the safety zone. And anytime you find yourself riding for, for a day all in one direction, you say, oh, I don't want, I don't want to spend all that time getting back. All you have to do wherever you are is there's this little ritual you go through and bingo, you and your horse are right back at the beginning, right where you started. So uh, you don't have to worry about, have I gone so far that I have to get back before dark? You can get back anytime you want. And that's true whether you're hiking or horseback riding or just walking. So this whole thing is about recreation, fun, and People are probably saying, why, why do you got to do this? Why can't I just go in real life, go horseback riding? Well, the idea behind this is practice and to have fun and be safe. And it might take someone, a beginner, maybe you do it once an hour a day for a month or so. What you're trying to do here is set up the safety of the park and practice before you start getting into heavy things. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But it's not just sports. It's art and music and gardens and ponds mm -hmm. and relaxation hot tubs. Do you want to talk a little bit about that before we go into some of that? Well, sure. Stuff? Yeah, there's a lots of things. I'm just kind of talking about the outdoorsy yeah, part that yeah. you can do first. You know, yes, when you first get first. to Tom's Park, yes. do that first and do it until you can do it in such a way that you lose yourself in it, that you can get so into your ride, you know, with your horse that you let it unravel as it does that you're so into your jet ski and getting around that course just a little faster next time that uh, you, know, you forget about the fact that this is a daydream. So these are interesting things you can do and they were, they're interesting enough and multi-sensual enough that it's easy to get lost in them. You see, if you do something that only has vision, well, that's not as absorptive, it doesn't, it doesn't grab you as deeply as if you do something that has vision and sound and taste and feel, because once you get all those senses going, you crowd out everything else. So you very quickly get into that state. So if you're not used to, to uh, working with your imagination that way, it may take you 10 or 20 or 50 or a hundred times of going there and getting in your jet ski or riding your horse or, going snorkeling or whatever else it's there to do, it may take you a lot of time just doing it and doing it and doing it before you end up with a rich, multi-sensual, you know, all your senses are, are working. 
environment that is so interesting and so detailed that you lose yourself in it. That's the point. So you do that kind of recre, you know, I call it recreation, but just having fun, enjoying yourself, even if it's just a walk around the lake. It doesn't have to go, you don't have to play, you know, a, a game. You can just walk around the lake, but get walk around it and observe things, you know, and get into it, make it for all your senses. So yes, you do that first and you repeat it and repeat it until you're good at it, until you can really get into it. And then would be the time to do some of the other things. Now we have, I have certain things um, all around the park and a lot of them are in the lodge, some of them in the, in the upstairs, some of them in the, mid, the middle floor, some of them in the basement of the lodge. There's just all kinds of things to do that will lead you to a, an experience in the non-physical, to some paranormal experience. All of these various rooms and things to do, they, they kind of take you by the hand and lead you to a paranormal experience. And some of them are more um, canned in the sense that there's instructions that you go through, particular things like you can go to a travel agency there and take a trip. And there's a whole set of, of trips that you can choose. So now these, that's what I would call can. These are can trips. So you want to go, you want to get beamed up to an alien spaceship? Okay. Well, you just take that. And when you take that, what happens is that you end up getting a data stream, which describes your reality. You know, it does that here as well as anywhere else, describes your reality and you're beamed up to an alien spaceship. So you can take these trips or you can make up a trip of your own. You know, you can go back in time to any place or anywhere you want to go. So there's just things that you can do. Some of them are more scripted than others. If you are a beginner, you probably will start with the more scripted things. And as you get more experience in it, you'll start to be do more freelancing. And when it comes to freelancing, one thing I should mention is that you are not only allowed, but encouraged to modify the park in any way you want. So if there's a particular kind of function that just makes good sense to you that you'd like to have there, well, just put it there. You know, just put it there. Just remember there can't be anything that is frightening or hurt. You know, it, you can't be, it can't make you sneeze. You know, it can't uh, scratch your skin. You know, it has to always be comfortable and positive uh, and it'll always be there. So the next time you come back, that, that feature will be in your park. So you have the ability to add to the park, or if you like, even take away from the park. If there's something I've put there you don't like, well, you can erase it. See, eventually this is going to be your own creation. This is going to be your launch pad, you know, into the non-physical, into the paranormal. But it's not going to be that on the first time you do it. This is something you have to build. You have to work with it in order in order to do that. So you're encouraged to put things in. There was a, a lady that uh, wrote me uh, an email and she said that she created a framing room where she could reframe things because in her set of metaphors, framing things means the way that you perceive them, the way, you know, your perspective on a particular event. So you've had a real hard life and you struggled with your parents and you fought with your mother or whatever happened. And, and now you'd like to reframe that. You'd like to see that from a different perspective. See how that was for mom, not just how it was for you, you know, if you had this thing. So you could go into this room and she had little things set around her. It would just help her reframe situations that were in her life. So that's the sort of thing that it's good to do. If you need a reframing room, well, make one and give it all the stuff the things that you need to make your process of reframing simple, easy, and safe. So it's a very uh, flexible park, but I give you plenty to start with, to do, and to experience plenty of, of connections to the paranormal. Yes, there is a, a hot springs where you can uh, get rid of all the, the, the junk and the heaviness that you bring you know, to life. You know, life is full of 
difficulties, and we carry a lot of those difficulties around with us for a long time. And that hot springs, I give a little way that you can use those hot springs to to lighten up, to get rid of that that baggage that you carry with you that you don't really need anymore. You know, old things that helped you get through life 20 years ago. Well, now it's time to let them go. You don't need them anymore. So that's a hot, or you can just enjoy the hot springs. You know, you don't have to do that. You can, or you can make up your own tools while you're there. There's a, there's a, uh, a lily pond there that uh, basically uh, is a very kind of a sacred space. It's one of those places you go where it's deep and meaningful and to meditate there is, is trivial. All you have to do is kind of sit and let go for a second and boom, you know, you're gone. It is a, you know, a very spiritual place. And it has the neat attribute that once you step into that area, you can no longer hear or be distracted by anything outside of that area. So the people that are just a short distance away, maybe having a party in the hot springs, well, you can't hear them. They just aren't there anymore. It's just you. You are the only person. You're there in this very beautiful little garden with the fish, you know, swimming in the pond and so on. And it's just you and that space. And there's a there's a vortex in that space that amplifies your intentions. So it makes it you know, doubly easy for you to heal or grow or do anything that you want to you want to do there. So there's orchards, you know, there's places to walk, there's fruit and vegetables to pick, there's everything there that I think that you could imagine to fill your time with or that you could be interested in. And that's, we haven't even gotten into the lodge yet. You know, these are just the things that are out, outside in Tom's Park. In, in the lodge, there's just a, a myriad before you go of- to the lodge, Before you go to the lodge, um, so, for example, I like that you brought up that woman's email. For example, Tom helped me when I was so left brain uh, quite a few years ago. Um, imagine flying. So I put an airport in Tom's park. And at the time, mm -hmm. he, ga he gave me the help for the metaphor of flying. He didn't know I was an actual pilot. So I have, I have my aviation center there as an example. Mm -hmm. Another example that someone said during one of our MBT events was, well, when I went there, there was only like three hot tubs. And, I, and what's nice about this area is that you can add more because he said there's never going to be a time when there's not enough room or enough people or staff or things. So it's really your imagination. So we said, why don't you have 100 hot tubs there? And then you just go in one and you will never not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I thought that right. He leaves us enough room for our our imagination mm -hmm. so that there's nothing there that's going to bother you. And then there's things that you can add or remove. So right. I just wanted to add that. Right. Let's if you'd ahead. like, yeah, yeah, if you'd like other people around, if that gives you comfort that you're, that yeah. there are other people around, then have a hundred hot tubs and <laughs> have, have the other 99, you know, all populated and you have one to yourself or if you're sharing one then the other people don't bother you mm -hmm. you see but if if you're a person that would rather be there alone that privacy and and being in an empty quiet space if that's something you want then you're there by yourself it's just you and nobody else is around and you are in this hot tub by yourself or maybe with your best friend or maybe with your spouse or maybe your kids are there, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter, but you can make it however it is you want it. And again, you, you'll learn this just through practice. As you practice, everything will get easier and easier and you'll be able to start arranging things the way you, you want them. I have some people that have a problem with it where the uh, hot tubs are. There isn't a change room. Right. So, right. you know, but there is one just in just a few steps away, just inside the lodge. No, at the basement of the lodge. Let's talk about the lodge because I, there's yeah. so much. So we've been doing outdoor and fun things. And now we're assuming that you've moved along. And I want, uh, Tom, I'd love you to talk about what's, what's there at the lodge because that is so dynamic. And you've thought of everything. Well, you walk into the lodge, and the first thing you'll notice is that it's beautiful. You know, the architecture is a is just a work of art. You know, it's 
rugged and it fits into being, you know, a park. It's out in the woods. It's made of a lot of stone, but also there's a lot of, of glass, you know, lots of places in the lodge where you can look out and see what's, what's going on elsewhere in the park. And the interior work, is, the woodwork is all very, very beautiful, you know, and well done. And when you walk into the lodge, there's a big fireplace right in the center of the room. And it's always pleasant in the lodge. You know, it's never too hot. It's never too cold. It's never stuffy. It's never too crowded. It's always really nice. And there are two restaurants there, you know, one that is very upscale and spiffy, you know, and uh, very classy. You know, and then there's another one that is just the opposite. That's just very casual, you know, put your feet up on the chair kind of thing. You know, it's a it's a very casual thing. And they both serve fantastic meals. You know, you can get to the classy restaurant and you can have a, you know, a seven course meal if that suits you. Uh, go with friends. Uh, there's always staff there that can go with you if you happen to be by yourself. But bring your family along. You know, bring your family along there. Have have yourself and your children and all your grandchildren at a big table, you know, at the uh, lodge. Because even the spiffy part welcomes children. So, anyhow, there's there's that sort of thing. There's a long row of little alcoves, places that are kind of private where you can sit and talk and have conversation, get to know somebody, uh, talk to a maybe a counselor or somebody in the staff there who who is, uh, you know, part of your process of growing and understanding. You can always go to one of those alcoves and just uh, talk there. It's very private and it has big views, you know, it has big windows. It looks out, you know, over, uh, over the outside gardens is what you see when you look out of those windows. There's a facility for banquets. There's a, you know, a big for meetings, a meeting room. There is a place that is mostly just socializing, you know, hors d'oeuvres kind of a place that's, uh, that's kind of at the, at the far end of the middle floor of the lodge. And that's also sort of a spiffy place, you know, where there's hors d'oeuvres are always there, seats, tables. Uh, the service is always fantastic. You know, you don't have to, where's that waiter? You know, if you have a need for a waiter, one will be there. You know, one will always be there. So the, the place is made to be extremely convenient. See, I'm trying, you know, you, you made a, a mention earlier, well, you know, why don't you just go get on a horse and ride it? Well, you could do that, but if you go ride a horse someplace else, not in Tom's Park, but if you just go ride a horse or just take a walk in the woods, that's good, but it's got a lot of other details that go with it. You know, you've got the transportation there and you have to get a horse that suits you. And, you you know, you have a lot of things to go and you can only rent it for so many minutes and then you have to return it. And the horse is only going to go on the path it's learned to walk on and you're not going to be able to take it other places. And there's just always in our life here in this physical reality, there's always a lot of constraints on everything. Constraints of time, constraints of resources, constraints of what horses are available, constraints on what trails are available. You always have constraints. And yes, you can take a walk in the woods, but there's always constraints. And you're liable to be bitten by mosquitoes and find gnats in your face. And when you go to Tom's Park, all of the constraints are removed. You don't have any constraints. Everything is just easy, and that's your fingertips. That way you get to go from one meaningful thing to the next meaningful thing to the next meaningful thing without a whole lot of trivial things like getting in your car and having to drive someplace, you know, to interrupt them. So when you're in Tom's Park, you can just get a whole lot more done because you only are doing the parts that are significant and meaningful to you and all the rest of it just disappears. You don't have that anymore. So I want to talk a, a little bit about... Um, it, so you're the you're the developer you're the person that did this for us but i'm i'm a user and i want to talk to the users for a minute i've heard people say well i don't know how to start i don't know what to do or my life is so perfect i can't think of a thing that tom's park would be good for so here's what i tell people get out a piece of paper write down things that have been on your mind for the last week 
So maybe it was a conversation you wanted to reframe with your sister. Maybe it was uh, a problem that you were having at work. Or you really wish you could talk to someone about this. That's all you needed, just someone to help you think it through. Whatever you thought of in that last week, write that down. And you didn't have, you couldn't reframe that with your sister or you can fix that at work or you didn't have access to a counselor. Like Tom said, all about constraints. So for people that don't know what to do after the fun things and you've been in for a while, when you make that list, have that as your intent to go to the park. I intend to go and reframe this with my sister or have a conversation with my sister or that boss that I had. I really want to talk to them about this and you can talk to your boss about mm -hmm. that. Talk a little bit about that, Tom, where now the lodge becomes super, super important to you to have these experiences. Okay, well, of course, the lodge works with your imagination. So if you would like to have dinner with your sister, a private dinner where you're not going to be interrupted, where it's a quiet space and uh, you can get into a good conversation, well, then invite your sister. Bring your sister along. Now, what that means is you go to the lodge and you and your sister, in your imagination, walk into the lodge together. And they, you walk down to the, uh, the Spiffy restaurant and talk to the maitre d' and you'd like a, you know, a private table and you can describe what it is you'd like. And sure enough, you will be seated and you will have menus to, you know, and you will have food delivered and you can have the conversation or go sit in an alcove and have a talk you know, with your sister. So you can invite people there. You can, you can take your boss there, you know, and you can take your friends there. Like I say, your family, the grandkids, whomever, and you can have that interaction with them. And you know, when you have that interaction with your sister there or your boss, you are thinking thoughts. You're, ex you're exchanging information. You're telling them things that are meaningful to you. And because your consciousness and because they are consciousness, they will get that. You really are connecting with your sister or your boss or your grandchildren, the people you invite there. You really are interacting with them in a way that is, you know, it, it bleeds over into this physical reality. Because as you chat to them, those things you're saying, they will get that. They'll connect that because you're talking to them. Consciousness to consciousness, communication will take place. Same with your boss. So if you go there and you're trying to trick your boss into doing something nice for you that you really don't deserve, hey, boss, I'm going to take you to this really nice place that you should give me a raise. The boss will also be aware that he's being manipulated and probably won't like it much. So you see, it's just like real life. When you're there, everything you do there is, is part of your consciousness. Your consciousness is netted with all other consciousness. So all the things you happen, if you go to there to have that heart to heart with your sister, you will be having that heart to heart with your sister, except you'll be doing it in that context rather than learn how to meditate, go to point consciousness, think of your sister, bring up a connection to your sister and have the conversation. See, that's all kind of uh, sterile compared to this organic thing that Tom's Park gives you. It gives you an environment in which those things happen and you really are solving problems with your sister and you'll notice that problem. You'll notice if you take your sister and you really do work out issues and things, you will realize that your sister, yes, you're alive, breathing, walking sister that you deal with in this physical reality, that relationship will be better with that sister because of the honesty and the truthfulness that you have brought to the table. You see, so it works. It's not like your imagination is just this thing you make up and doesn't have any effect. Your imagination is your consciousness, your thoughts. And those thoughts are powerful and they connect with other people. So the Tom's Park just gives you the context in which all that's easy. You don't have the constraints to deal with, the things to learn. All you have to do is go there and go snorkeling, swim, play with your jet ski, talk to the animals, ride the horses until it becomes natural for you to interact there. Once it becomes natural for you to interact there, 
now invite your sister that you have this problem with and have that conversation and invite her again. You might invite her every evening, you know, for three or four days and chat with her and explore your relationship or whatever it is that seems to be the problem. And, you know, all things aren't accomplished just at one, at one sitting, one time. But this is the environment in which is relaxed, has no prerequisites. You, ha- you come with an imagination. You don't have to go find one. You know, all you have to do is develop it a little to make it a really useful tool. And Tom's Park gives you that structure within which you can make it a useful tool. What I learned from being in your uh, classes is that really don't waste your time there by having drama or screaming matches with, with your boss or whatever. It's really important when you're doing this is what your intent and your thoughts are. That you really honestly, I love what you said about honesty and love, come from your heart and that you really want to resolve this or just sit there and tell them how much that you love them or honor them. I think that gets you, I think we need to talk about evolution when you're doing these things, that you want to evolve mm-hmm. and evolve through love because you spent a lot of time on that when we were in the workshops. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think you have to bring that with you here. Absolutely. Like I say, there's nothing that's negative in Tom's park. So if you sit down with your boss and get into an argument and then the boss gets angry, you have created that. You see, you bring that negativity to the park. That's you making your boss angry at you. And you might think about that. Why do I do that? Why do I bring my boss here and then get into a fight with him or my sister and get into a fight with him? Well, there's some real learning there for you because that's what you've done. You have You have created them angry because you need them or expect them or want them to be angry, you see? So that's the point. If you find things there that are not positive, you have brought them. You have created them. And you need to then think about, why do I create this angry boss? You know, and you are creating it. So be positive. And then go back in and say, well, let's start this over again. All right. Now, the boss and I are walking into the Tom's Park and we're going over to an alcove. And then next time, don't create the angry boss. Create the friendly boss. Create the boss that will listen. You know, I mean, the boss didn't come there. You brought the boss there. So the boss is there to listen. So tell the boss what it is you'd like to tell him. But uh, Stay positive. Stay positive. Stay positive. And and if you find yourself in that pattern, if you have a pattern of jealousy and you find yourself, how do you, what what you've taught me, Tom, is to really take a look at your thoughts and how powerful thoughts are. So I really, the last few years, been taking a look at, at my thoughts. How do I think about things? When something happens to me, what am I thinking? And so I'll go back and write that down and look for patterns And so before I bring my boss or my sister in, I will go there and ask for counseling. So I will meet in an Mm -hmm. off call with a counselor and say, can you help me unravel why I'm having these thoughts of jealousy or, um, you know, why am I always getting into these fights? Is there a theme? Even if you didn't know the theme, maybe you don't realize that, you can ask for a counselor. I found that to be very helpful, Tom. Sure, absolutely. Everything you need is in Tom's Park. You just have to find it and learn how to use it. So again, that'll happen. You know, you didn't probably go find a counselor and sit down and talk about things like that on your first day. No, no, no. You know, that's the stuff that occurs to you later. That's as you become more open to the process. Because this whole process is an opening. You know, you start maybe and you can't imagine anything, you know, and your intellect is always sitting there all the time. Well, then you start working with that and you work with that. And and eventually you'll get to the point that, yes, you will go to the place that gives you counseling and you'll find these counselors are really very helpful oh my God. and they have insights that you don't have. They will they will see things that you're not aware of. So this idea, oh, well, well, it's just me playing all parts, so I can't. I can't come up to anything that, you know, isn't already in me. Well, you won't find that. You will find that you will get counseling and you will get ideas there that 
weren't in your head. They will come and it will be helpful. But that doesn't happen on your first day in the park. That happens after you've come and gone enough that you real that you have figured out how to interact in the park to gain what you need. And yes, going to find a counselor and talking about things first is a is a good idea. And then once you get ideas, then you know you can apply those. Then maybe you can bring your sister to the park. And like I say, let's say you bring your sister to the park and you get in an argument with your sister. So you just start over. You can say, okay, stop. Okay, hi, sis. Let's go inside and go sit in an alcove and talk. And you start over. And if that doesn't work well, you can stop. And you can go back out and start again. You see, you can go back in and do that as many times as it takes before you stop creating negative responses in your mind. So, so another another hint is when I got the book, uh, I got the ebook, and what I did was I read it through one time without even trying to trying to do my imagination, and thought about it for a while and read it again. Got the map; it was really important for me to get the map. Print out mm -hmm. the map, have the map, and then I didn't go to the lodge for a while. I played, I snorkeled, mm -hmm. I horseback ride. I did. I went in the hot. I did a lot of things mm -hmm. before I entered the lodge because I I knew. How important it was. So I think when I went to the lily pad in that sacred space, it made me go, okay, I'm, the lodge for me will be sacred. I will find out lots of things. And Tom's right, you guys. I went and asked for a counselor and we sat down and there were insights I don't think I got from a human counselor. And it wasn't things that I made up. So that was extremely helpful for, for me because I thought, you're right, Tom, these beings aren't, even though I started with my imagination, when I really got into it, they really gave me insights and really helped mm -hmm. me before I could bring my sister in. And I think people should know that. Yes. Well, look at it from this viewpoint, you know, from the structure, as I, as I looked at it and planned it when I created it, when you get in there and you let things unravel as they do, you're getting a direct line from the LCS. So when you're talking about your sister and, or you're talking to your counselor, you can get insights directly from the LCS. And the LCS is probably the smartest person that you're going to talk to. They know a whole lot. They know about you and they know about your issues and they know about your problems and they know about why you have those problems. The LCS is aware of all of that information. So this is the probably the most perfect and the most knowledgeable counselor you will ever have access to. So once you get in there and, and, go through all the activities and things to where you are really interacting with the park in a, in a really useful way. Yes. You're going to get things from that counselor and from other people you talk to that are totally outside of you. And they're coming in through that data stream between you and the LCS. So it's not just you in there alone. You see it's, it's, and it's not that you're limited just to the things that you can think of at all. You're going to find insights and connections. These people that you run into, all the staff at the park, they're all unique. They're not, they're not just another copy of you. They are all, they have their own personalities. They, they are just individual people. Okay. So yes. And they might not look like people. When I went downstairs for a healing session and I asked the, the concierge and I asked for, you know, I, I want to meet my healer. The person that came out was not a person. <laughs> it was like, oh, <laughs> they yeah. didn't have a human name. They didn't look human. But the boy, what healing took place? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, that's what I mean. Things will happen there that you wouldn't have made up if you were making it up. Yeah, things that you would never have come up with. And it's you just have to get used to that. It's like that and accept that as it comes and you deal with what you deal with, you don't say, Oh, you're not human, go away, bring me a human one, you know, it just, it is what it is. And the system will be working with you to give you things to help you learn and to help you grow. This is a growing space. So if, you know, if you get a, a, a non human uh, person, well, that's in a way, maybe a little test, how are you going to react to that? Are you going to say, Ooh, 
you've got three heads and, and warts all over your nose. You know, I don't, you know, are you going to react like that? You know, which is all self-centeredness, you know, and arrogance and other sorts of things, or are you going to be different? So the, the system is going to give you things that you need in order for you to grow. And the system specifically will pick out these things that, that are applicable to you. These are not just generic stuff. So, you know, that's why Times Park is so effective. Because if you walk around in the physical world, well, stuff just happens because it happens because everybody else has free will and you're just in this big soup of stuff that happens. When you're at Times Park, the stuff that happens is stuff you need to happen. It's stuff that, that is important to happen for you. It's stuff that's on your growth path. But first, you have to get into that part where you're really in tune with Tom's Park. And again, that's what the swimming and the games and all the, you know, all the stuff at the recreation center and the animals and all the rest of that helps put you into that space where you can really use Tom's Park in a, in a very effective way to grow up. Well, I've used Tom Park in a very effective way to grow up. I, I think... I think we talked about this on one MBT when you first met me, how left brained I was, how mm -hmm. I was really, really so intellectual. I didn't have any idea how to do this. And I felt like at times that Tom made Tom's Park for people like me and that it's made me, I've changed so much in the last, I think, two, two and a half years. And Tom's Park has accelerated that. So I just don't want Tom talking about the park and the places i want you guys to realize how really different this is how really exponential you can grow so it's all about love and involved that evolving that you can't get in the 3d so we have tom here he's talking about how he created it but i'm trying to tell you guys how to use it and tom's telling mm -hmm. you how to use it too because when i met that healer when i looked at that person i was surprised but it was fun. I just went, oh my gosh, you're huge. <laughs> Maybe that's how much healing I need. <laughs> I needed a really big person to heal how much stuff there was. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's taught me. That's what Tom has taught me. And that's what Tom, that's how I use Tom's Park. So we can talk about all the emails that you've gotten, Tom, from all these people and all the ways that you've helped them. Not only mm -hmm. have you helped them by creating it, but you've also answered the questions in the MPT healing and you're available for people. Would you, would you agree with that? Sure. That's what's important, right? People are important. Yeah. People's growth is what's going to save us all, right? When we all grow up, then we'll live in a very happy, beautiful, lovely, gentle space. And we'll all be able to grow to whatever extent we're capable of growing. There won't be all these little things that get in the way, all these, you know, whatever. So sure, that's what's important in life is to, of course, first grow yourself up and then second, be useful to other people to help them grow up. That's what it's all about. And that's what it will remain all about until a larger number of us are grown up and the world becomes a much more pleasant place because then when people come here, they'll grow up more quickly because they'll have all sorts of examples and, and you know, everything will be in place. It'll be easy for them to grow up quickly. Right now, this is a hard place to grow up because there's so few people in it who are grown up. That makes it really hard. You know, like if you're in a, in a nursery, you know, if you're in a daycare, well, it's really hard to, uh, you know, grow up a little more than that level. Then you get out of daycare and you start going to school and then you start going to college and then you start going to graduate school and then you go into life, then there's a lot of difficulties, you know, a lot of things. You, you only can learn as much as you're ready for. So Tom's Park is a, is a, it's a tool. It's a tool that you can use to help yourself grow up. And it's a very powerful tool in that it's directly connected to the LCS. And all you have to do is, be positive. Just walk into the park and enjoy it and then be positive in it. Pay attention and learn. You know, you have to go there with the idea that maybe you'll learn something rather than go there with the idea that you already know everything and what could you possibly learn? <laughs> you know, so it's a, 
it's just a tool for people to use. But I, I made it specifically that you, I didn't say first, you have to learn how to meditate before you can use Tom's Park. First, you have to get point consciousness before you can get into Tom's Park. It's none of that stuff. Just read the book, read it again, probably read it a third time, and then start to play and play until you develop this ability to imagine in all your senses all at the same time and interact with the animals, the critters, and the staff. And when you get to that point, then start doing the things that are more focused on very specific paranormal things and on just personal development, you know, like counselors, you know, personal development, your health, your fear, getting rid of your fears. There's a fear clinic there, you know, and you can go there and they'll help you uh, get rid of the, get rid of fears. You can even get your toenails painted there. You can get a pedicure if you wish, you know, there's uh, all sorts of things there that are just relaxing. You can go lie in the grass under a shade tree. You know, it, just use it to go relax. You know, that it's good for that as well. You don't have to do anything. It's a park. I love it. Well, thank you, Tom. You know, so we spent a lot of time talking about the fun aspects and some of the places, but really, I think the big thing is get the book, read it, begin thinking about your imagination. Like you said, it doesn't have to be all personal development. It could be just relaxing or evolving or however you want to use it and um, I'll have some links on the companion website about our MBT when we meet when you can join um, you can join us on our healing months or the week of uh, we do a, a once a month healing all that will be available on the companion website and you can also I'll link to the MBT events and you can sign up for classes with Tom but to Tom's Park has been, I, I thank you, Tom, for your time. Is there anything else you wanted? To, did, was there anything else you wanted to share about Tom's Park that I didn't ask? Oh, or we didn't get well, to? the only thing we haven't really talked about is probably the sticking point that many people will have with it. And that's the price. There's this little tiny book that's only that yeah, thick. Exactly. You know, it's only got about 60 pages on it. And can you believe it? This guy wants 80 bucks for that. You know, it's a it's a lot, but it's a it's a training course. Mm -hmm. It's a training course that's probably more valuable than the ones that I've given that you know takes twenty five hundred dollars, you know, to get to it. And then you have to travel, and then you have all the inconveniences. Uh, it is uh, it is a tool that if you use it, will be worth a thousand times what it is you have to pay for it. But why, why the big price? Well, partly because it's become what Keith and Donna and Pamela and I live on. So we needed a couple of things that would actually bring in enough money to keep us focused you know, on doing this rather than focused on how we're going to you know, how we're going to pay our bills and, you know, and do things. So we needed a moneymaker. And it seemed like the value that you get for that, it's still a very good deal, even at $80. The companion to Tom's Park is a, uh, a program. It's the same program that we used to do live. And like I said, that was typically $2,500 uh, plus your travel, you know, to to do that. And that is priced at just a hundred dollars. And it's the full five day course of how to experience the paranormal, get into and explore the non-physical, how to do that. And it's, it's a, it's a five day course you can take in your home. It's all on audio. It's an audio program. So that's something that, uh, that you can do and do Tom's part. Those two, I think, could probably work well well together. Now, some people have, have uh, said that they expected that people who hadn't been part of the MBT, My Big Toe community, hadn't read the books, My Big Toe, they'd have a hard time with Tom's part because he wouldn't know what to do. But I disagree with that. I made Tom's part for anybody 
and everybody, whether they've read My Big Toe or not, or whether they've meditated before or not, it's just, if you can take it seriously, if you get the understanding, and hopefully I have, I have made that clear in the book. Now, I know the book is repetitive, but it's repetitive on purpose. It's repetitive because these are the ideas that need to sink in, and they only sink in through repetition for most people. You know, if, if once you get the idea, you don't need any prerequisites for this. You don't need to have read anything. Now, some people who just totally missed the point of it, you know, might be disappointed with it because it didn't magically come out and change them or something, you know. But uh, for the most part, it's tremendous value for what you get. You could spend 10 times that money and come away with much less. So and most people do, you know, over a lifetime, spend time, tens, 10 times that much money and come away with much less. So, yes, it is a fairly hefty price, but it is all that money is going to a good cause. And that's to keep myself and Pamela and Keith and Donna alive and well and healthy, uh, putting out this kind of material. So that's I, I just want to mention that because people do see that little skinny book for $80. And it just is like crazy that any, any little book could cost that much. But it isn't a book. You don't get the value out of Tom's Park by reading the book. The book just sets you up to have a success in Tom's Park. It tells you the things you need to do, the things you need to focus on, the things that are available, and how to access them. So it's basically just an instruction guide to a tool that will help you develop all the rest of your life. See, I agree with that. And I've, I've heard from people that they think they're, they think the value's in the book, like you said, and the value's not mm. in the book. If you go to Disneyland, I know I was shocked by the Disneyland price, and that was a while ago. Yeah. And you had to pay that price every single time you went to Disneyland. You're paying right. $8 once, and you can go to this park every single day. And like I said, how much would you pay for a counselor? How much would you pay for horseback riding? The, it's the, if you're a person that's looking solely at the price of the book, I would say look, look inside yourself for a minute and see where you're placing value. Where, where's the emphasis? Mm -hmm. you, you have all the words there, but the emphasis is on the wrong syllable. You know, yeah. The said. emphasis. The emphasis is on the wrong syllable. <laughs> Meaning the, all the letters are there. You're just pronouncing it wrong. So the book is there, yeah. but you're you're focusing on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. So in terms of value, even though you're talking about it for the four of you, it's the value of where you, where you're going and what you can do. I, yeah. I just, I just, it just surprises me when people say that. But yeah. Well, they don't know, you know, they don't understand don't, if you, don't yeah, yeah, it's not a, you know, it's, it's, you know, if I didn't have any connection to any of these things I have, and I ran across a little skinny book that was cost $80, I'd, I'd, like, I'd probably go, whoa, whoa. whoa, see, this writer must really think his words this are golden. Cool. Yeah, but it's not of yourself. Yeah, right. But it's not the words. Yeah, it's, it's not the, the book. Not the That's book. just the introduction of how to use the exactly. tool. The thing that is worth much more than $80 is the tool itself. It's if you fun. use it according to the instructions, then you will find it is a life changer. Absolutely. And, and, and I like that you address that. People think that you have to read uh, your book, My Big Theory of Everything, and you don't. And, and for people that get hung up on that book, I said, just read book one. Just get the main idea of the vocabulary, Tom's history. Don't worry about it. And, and you don't even have to do that. You just go there. You might not understand when he says LCS or some other things, but just don't worry about it. It's LCS's source, God, whatever, the creator of the universe, whatever you want to think. And yeah. it's more than that. Yeah, just go do it. Just go right? do it. You don't need the know how. Just go, <laughs> just go do it. Don't go do it. Well, just... I don't have an imagination. Well, <laughs> if you were in my classroom and I was teaching you and I'm the professor, I don't know how many people I drove into imagination and daydreaming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Everybody has an imagination. Yeah. Most people just don't use it. Yeah. purposefully. I mean, they use it without trying, without thinking about it. The imagination just goes off and wanders for a few seconds, but everybody has an imagination. You Dangerous. just have to train it yep. to where it will do what you want. And it's not that hard. 
and the Tom's Park, the fun end of Tom's Park, the yeah. interactive part of Tom's Park, you know, physical interactive time. That's just meant there is uh, meant to be there as the training yeah. for that imagination yeah. to get a little stronger and healthier and and uh, more robust. And it will do that. So, you know, if somebody says I don't have an imagination and my response to that is you're not trying. Yeah. You know, everybody has an imagination, even if that imagination is something that your intellect has an iron grip on. All right. Now I'm talking to my counselor and my counselor says and then I go over and I talk for the counselor and then I come back and I talk for me. You know, even if your intellect won't let go. Well, then forget about the counselor for now. Yeah. Go back to the jet ski. Go back to the, you know, the handball court. Go back to swimming and snorkeling and chatting with the deer and the, and the raccoons. Yes. You know, go back to that for a while until you can work that seamlessly. And when that works, now go back to the counselor. And if the left brain is still there in charge because... It didn't matter about the conversation with the raccoon, but I really care about this, what the counselor says. Well, go back and start working, getting your imagine, you know, get that that uh, imagination geared up to a little higher level. So you just have to do that and, and just try to let the experience get so involved in it that the experience starts to unroll on its own. And that's all you need. And then you just need a little discipline to not question it, to not, to not constantly be judging it. And, and, uh, was well, that real? No. Was that real? yeah, was, was that, that real? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh. Yeah. What's going on here? Oh yeah. Who said that? Yeah. Just tell that left brain to just sit down and be quiet. I'm just going to experience. It's just an experience. I'm not going to put any value on the experience yet. It's not necessarily even a valuable experience. It's just an experience. And if you can learn to imagine and just have the experience, then you're almost home free. Everything else will fall in place very quickly. But if it's not just an experience, this is a something else. This is more than just an experience. This is going to teach me how to get along with my sister. Well, if you come in with that kind of set of requirements and with that you know, that left brain organizing what's going to happen and how it's going to happen, then nothing will happen for you. You won't have that connection to the LCS. You won't have, you know, you won't be getting out of it what's there. So that's just, this Tom's Park is just another way for us to do all these paranormal things without even knowing that we're doing them. (laughs) To do them in such a natural setting that it, yeah, it works know. that you don't even know you're doing things you paranormal. Know. All you're doing is just talking to a raccoon. I mean, that's not paranormal. You know, it's <laughs> stuff, stuff just happens and you're a part of it. And once you can get to that point where now it's just an experience. All right. I'm talking to my dead uncle Fred and he and I are sitting down in one of those alcoves having a having a chat. And that becomes just as easy as talking to a raccoon. You see, then it all starts to work. And then you start getting knowledge and information and, and things that help you grow up and helps you see life in a different way and actually improves your life here in the physical. So it's not that Tom's Park becomes a place that you run off to right. because it's more fun yeah. than life. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, oh. the, that's the one big no-no in Tom's Park is don't, don't use Tom's Park to escape from your everyday physical life. It's not an escape. You know, it's, it's not a, a, a drug free way you know, to lose yourself. It's, it's, it's not it. Some people will want to use it that way, but that would be a misuse of Tom's park. You need to use it maybe an hour a day. You, maybe if you did two or three hours a day, it wouldn't happen for a while, but don't make it your life. Don't replace life with Tom's park. Exactly. That's a problem. Tom's park is going to give you, growth and hints and concepts and strategies for living that life better so that that outside that physical matter of life is as good as it can get. It's going to help you make that life better. You can't make that physical life better by escaping from it, by ignoring it and by going into Tom's Park instead. 
So that is the is the one big thing that you do not do. You don't escape into Tom's Park. Oh, it's such a nice, wonderful, safe place. I love it. I just go there and lie down in the grass and take a nap. And I'm so relaxed afterwards. You know, I don't think I'll go to work today. I think I'm just going to stay here in Tom's Park. You know, that would be that would be a mistake. Oh my you know, you got to get up and go to work and do all your due diligence in the physical reality and let Tom's Park be a thing you do on your own in some free time regularly. Yes, regularly, but not not so regularly that it displaces yeah. other things. You still have to pay attention to your life and all the people that are in your life. It's just something you do that will help you with that life. After a few months with Tom's Park, that physical life should start to get better, work better for you, relationships get better, the boss likes you better, all sorts of things will happen, you know, your sister will like you better, all sorts of things will happen as you go, and that's the point of it. It's not to replace the reality that you're struggling in with one where you don't have to struggle, it's to help you stop struggling in the physical reality. And you guys, I'd recommend going back and listen to the Wednesday podcast because Nathan and I talk a lot about different things that we do there, how we got there, what we use it for. So if you're still, after this, if you're still not <laughs> sure, we're going to recommend Wednesday. And if you're still not sure, we're going to recommend all the other things on the companion website. So just relax. Relax the rules. Relax the rule set. When I was at the Monroe Institute for the workshop with Tom, I was struggling, struggling. I said, Tom, I need a metaphor. I need a metaphor. He gave me an airplane metaphor. And when I went into the meditation, my left brain was still being the president, you know, just sitting there saying, no, is that real? Is that real? So finally, I said, okay, imagination, step up. So we duct taped my left brain to the wing of the airplane <laughs> so that I could go have some fun. So whatever <laughs> metaphor works for you, whatever your imagination to stop that left brain, just have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Tom's Park is made to be fun and it's got a lot of fun things in it because if it's not fun and it's always serious, well, that, that left brain is always going to be there to tell you how to do it. Yes, left brain. And bring some duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. Bring some duct tape. Yeah, duct Tape your brain to the wing. That is yeah. a good thing. If you can't and you don't have imagination, use that one. You can use mine. <laughs> Not trademarked. All right. Thank you, Tom. My my good, good friend, Tom. You've helped me so much. And this Tom's Park has just helped me beyond anything that I could have thought of. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you, Donna, for this interview. And I think we've probably discussed some things about Tom's Park that I have, don't think I've done before. I don't think I've, I don't think we've really delved into Tom's Park and how it works and what it is uh, quite as deeply anywhere else. So uh, I, I think you're, you're the leader in, in understanding Tom's Park right now. This, this uh, video, when you make it, is going to be very valuable. And I'm looking forward to putting it on my site and, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, passing it, uh, yeah, and you passing bet. it around to uh, as many people as possible. You so bet. thank you very much. Well, thank you, Tom, for un unleashing my right brain. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're welcome, Donna. Thank you.